What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio1Tutorials.com forward slash sample class. Check out Studio1Tutorials.com forward slash sample class. Everything that you need to take yourself from chord to composition to cash. Also, please don't forget to check out CMPKids.com. Everything from samples, MIDI, Ableton Live templates, Studio One templates, arrangement templates, drum kits, and chords for your MPC dot progression files can be found at cmpkits.com. Now today I want to speak to a issue that I see going around in like some of the comments, some of the talk um, is how to sync your MPC standalone to your DAW so that you can track it in and what have you, specifically Studio One. This is important as Akai has not updated their device uh, firmware yet to be able to run the MPC in controller mode, um, you know, controlling the MPC software as a VST or um, the actual software. So if you want to use an MPC right now um, on your uh, Mac M1, the best thing to do is just start creating in the MPC in standalone mode and then go ahead and track into a DAW. Now, um, there's, there's the best way to go about it is I'm going to flash some settings up on the screen right now this one is what you're going to set up under your sync preferences midi and sync preferences inside of your mpc in standalone mode and then here is the setting that you need to set up inside of your song setup general tab inside of studio one and then here is the instrument settings that you need to set up you're going to create a new instrument call it mpc and then you know just just mimic the settings that i have here go ahead and take screenshots of them send them to a file in case you need to go back to them right so that is that's it for how you set it up you set it up like that and then what you want to do is i'm using a five pin midi cable for mine right and my five pin midi cable goes directly to my claret interface and that's how we're getting um, MIDI talking between the two devices. I do not suggest using USB MIDI for this. Using a five pin MIDI cable is gonna be the best way. If you don't have an interface that supports five pin MIDI, um, getting something like a Mio, or you know, if you want to get fancy and get like an ERM multi-clock, but you need some type of uh, some type of MIDI device, uh, MIDI interface. There's a single Mio that you can get. You can get a Mio interface that has like um, five inputs, or you can. I have one in my other rack here. That's like ten of the MIDI DIN inputs and outputs that you can use. So those are all options. And now what I want to show you is the you know the the sync the sync uh, issues that occur with. The, tracking in this way right so the way that i track in is i go out of output one and two on my mpc i only use the output one and two right now and i go into my ssl6 right and that's awesome because you get the ssl super analog preamps you know don't need to sell you on that but um that's that that's that's my preamp right so i go from my preamp to my interface once you have everything set up the way that the way that i showed you in those previous three clips once you press play inside studio one i'll show you i'll show you here So that's that's me stopping Studio One. And you see I'm doing I'm doing that with the mouse and that's that's my that's my MPC playing it, right? Um the the pro the problem is, is a couple things. One, there is and I tell you this right now, there is no way right if you have some type of dream where you're gonna be using the MPC and standalone. And you're going to be playing keys in Omnisphere and you want them to sync up monitoring like this. It's not going to happen. There are so many things that are that's going to stop you from doing that. The main thing is is just is just your interface, right? Your interface does not allow for you to, you know, for you to. 
for you to deal with that type of round trip latency. You're at the mercy of your interface. So what you need to understand is when you work like this, you need to do whatever you're doing in your MPC you know, either first or last and get it into audio. And then all the stuff that you want to do in the computer, you do once you have your audio in here. Now, what I want to show you is if you look at, if you look at the green tracks that I have up top, these tracks are the, the these are the same exact drum samples, right? The same exact drum samples, um, the same pattern. And this was programmed on the MPC software, right? So this is the drum pattern. This is the pattern taken from the actual MPC. So it's the same thing, same groove, same swing and everything. What you got to watch out for, though, is that because because of the latency of your interface, when even though when you press when you press play and record, when you when you explode your tracks and you record them in one at a time, What's going to happen is all of your tracks are going to be delayed. Now, they're not all going to be delayed different values, so you don't have to worry about that, okay? They're all going to be delayed the same value, and the the easiest way to take care of that is, like, for example, this track that I did, it was, it was a two-bar loop, right? So what I did was I just recorded more than the two bars, and then what I like to do is I'll just is I'll just shrink these down into what the loop is actually going to be. I use the um, the slip edit inside of Studio One, where if you hold down uh, the option key and the command key, you go into the middle of the region, you'll get this left and right arrow. And then when you click and drag, it'll slide over all of the, um, you know, all of the information, right? So when you, when you look at what, when you look at what uh, the MPC the MPC software is giving us, right, it's telling us that this is this starts like right here. So I can just take this guy here, line it up, and then you see you see all you see all of our hi hats are in the same place, our snares are in the same place, right? Kicks are in the same place. It's all it's all on beat and on time. So just follow just follow those steps, um, and then just know when you do this, you're gonna have to line up your first kick in the pattern, and that's just that's just the way that it goes with tracking in MIDI. Um, you know, I would take it I would take it a step further because even believe it or not, even bouncing out of something digital like the MPC software inside of your VST using drag and drop gives you it gives you a few samples of latency so this you can actually get more precise and get that get that to start right here and have an even um, more precise experience than using the software So that's it, guys. This is CMP with Craftmaster Productions, studio12tutorials.com. Don't make me make this video again. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. And we will see you on the next one.